It is the Rhetoric Warriors podcast coming at you once again from the juncture of rhetoric and life and politics and comedy and and all sorts of cool stuff. It's like an intellectual bouncy house. We're just all just bouncing around trying to find the good stuff about public talk. Uh, I'm Dr. Dan, rhetorician, late night comedy writer. Those are my worlds, founder of Rhetoric Warriors. Uh, the podcast, I do three things. I talk to comedians about their careers and their politics because they're crazy. I convert conservatives because the right worries me. I think they need to be talked with. And I talk to persuasion pros and rhetoricians and people who have different perspectives that they're moving and pushing out into the world. And that's certainly my guest today. I would call this another episode of Persuasion Pros. Uh, and my guest is a personal development human and she's a life purpose coach, and she's got about 40 titles. You need to look at her uh, LinkedIn bio and her website, because it's just this cool experience of like strolling through a garden of, of healing and self-improvement, you know, in a good way. There's so many flowers and plants, and you're like, ah, oh, maybe that one. Uh, she's the founder and owner of Alma Armour, if I say that correctly, wellness center and vegan restaurant, which until pandemic tem- pandemic times was in Peru. Now she's locked down in Yorkshire in the UK, Marie Johnston. Did I say that right? How do you say your place? Marie Johnston, Yorkshire. I'm in Yorkshire. I got that right. What about your business? Alma Amor? Alma Amor. Alma Amor. Yeah, it's Spanish. Yeah. It's it means Spanish. soul love. Means what? Soul love. Soul love. I thought you said solo love. I'm like <laughs> teaching people how to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you've got, you've got a rainbow of stuff. I like that. A rainbow of stuff. Yeah, I do. You're like a little wizard. <laughs> yeah. Healing modalities right here. Yeah. The latest one is alchemy. <laughs> See? All right, so let's let's orient everybody to you because I've read about you and I talked to you uh, during lunch club, so I have a tiny idea of who you are. But uh, tell everybody, just give them a broad overview of of uh, Marie. Of what I do? Oh my goodness! So... Even just a little bio, like where'd you start and where'd you get to? I know you lived a big life; everybody has. But yeah, um, well, right now I I coach. Um, I coach people to, well, I coach people to connect to their hearts and live their dreams um, and be very aware of their ego, their pesky ego that's holding them back. Um, My pesky ego over here. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's what I do on a one-to-one basis. And Have you well, seen Fleabag? Fleabag? Yes. Yeah, I love Fleabag. <laughs> Have you seen the, the therapist in there? She's just kind of sitting back. You guys have this, about the same color hair. Yeah. And she's like, I'm getting this flea bag vibe with us right now. It's like, you're going to start to lotion your elbows in a minute. <laughs> I, do you know what? It's been such a long time since I, I, I watched it. I don't think I've not watched the, the latest. I, do you know, I don't watch TV. I don't have a TV. But my kids come. Every, I've, I've got uh, two um, adult children. And when they come by me, they're, they're armed with fabulous series that we binge on. Right. Um, and that was one of them. But it was like when I first came back, so I don't quite remember it, but I'm not a very traditional therapist that sat there going, how does that make you feel? I'm not really that kind of... Uh, no, you don't get that vibe at all. Like, So coach. anyway, just a little yeah. aside there, that was what was popping up in my head. So keep going with your background. Um, You're a coach. So, you started with yeah, coachness. I do. I but my coaching does include some therapy. It does include some being able to let go of um, childhood baggage in it. Because quite a bit of inner child work in it. I do include that. Um, and what I'm aspiring to do is start talking about our freedom and our sovereignty and being self-referenced. That's my passion. That's my latest passion. And 
I want to start talking about that and I want to st and I'm working at the moment on workshops and retreats that I want to that I want to that I want to hold. I want to. I, I do want to go back and reopen my centre. I don't know whether I'll be running things from my centre, but I know Peru so well. I know the Sacred Valley so well, and I know all the nooks and crannies and special places that the tour. It's not on the tourist trail. So you've got. I'm going to come back to Peru because that's kind of fascinating. Like you talk about it, like it's just you know an ordinary ordinary part of your life, but like you just use the term Sacred Valley you know, which for most people be like, what's in the sacred valley? So we'll come back, but like, okay, so take us, you were raised in Yorkshire mm -hmm. and then you sort of moved over into, from what I can tell from your bio, a lot of different healing modalities or helping modalities or different ways of approaching life. Like you have a, you yeah. started one place and you've moved through a lot of those. I have to confess first though that I started my life in investment banking. I saw is, that, right? <laughs> which is quite, <laughs> well, which you're still is doing investment up. banking. You just now invest in, in people, right? Well, I was always invested in people. I used to work in HR um, and I used to train and recruit and nurture, nurture graduates. And you know what? I've been checking them out on LinkedIn and they're all CEOs now, nearly all of them. So I had a pretty successful program, didn't I? Well done. Uh, I was getting it right. Um, <laughs> they're all up there. Um, so yeah, um, but then, then I left all of that to start my family. So I have, like I said, I have two adult children, and uh, and so I was stay at home mom full on. Apart from the fact that I decided I wanted to learn a second language whilst I was rearing them, so kind of forced us all to move to Europe. So I had I had nearly five years in Zurich where I learned German. Um, that was in Switzerland. And then I came back here. I think I was back here about seven years, something like that. And then I kind of had a bit of a loopy, crazy midlife crisis and just took off and hiked the States and hiked the Grand Canyon down and up in a day and um I had quite a lot of loopy things and then I I have a I apparently I have kind of a running Grand Canyon theme the last few weeks I interviewed my yeah, buddy else done that. Oh, it's my buddy Mark it's Newman cool. is uh, like a world renowned expert on the Grand Canyon like he, he did his dissertation on the Grand Canyon and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago on the podcast so that yeah. spiritual uh gulf you know Gulch is now somehow in this podcast. Yeah, it is just, you know what, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Like as the sun changes, as the, cause I started at, um, I started at daybreak and ended at sundown. Um, and as the, the lights changing throughout the day and the terrains change, oh, it's phenomenal. It was the most amazing, one of the most amazing things that I've ever done. Um, and then I got fed up of living out of a backpack and thought, I'm just too old for this. I'm not, I'm not cut out for backpacking anymore. And I took off back to Chicago and I said, uh, there's a bit of a story to about, about that. And then I, I, my visa ran out and I didn't want to go home. So well, my visa waiver ran out. So, um, and I realized I had, I thought I could just pop into Canada and see some mates or, or check out Mexico. But no, I had to leave the whole of North America. So I thought. Really? They kicked you off the continent? Yep. To <laughs> uh, to renew my visa waiver. Yep. So um, I had this book for this hero's journey that I wanted to do. And, uh, and I thought, well, why don't I go and do this on sacred ground? And I thought, I need to go to Peru. I didn't know the first thing about Peru. Didn't didn't even know that Machu Picchu was in Peru. That's how much I knew about Peru. Hey, I'm going to check something real quick. We're getting a little tick on our our audio. Are okay. you using an external mic or a? No, my computer one. Is it bound? Is it like on your lap or something? Oh, you know, maybe it's not very stable. Hang on, let me put it on my. Is that better? Uh, keep talking. We'll see. I think it is. So then I got to Peru 
and I just fell in love with it. I mean, I was just in awe. And I tell you, I spent seven years pinching myself every day to make sure you I must have been pretty bruised. <laughs> Sorry, that was just sitting there. <laughs> but just to remember, just to remind myself how lucky I was, you know, it was, it's just, it's just amazing. Yeah, I saw some and, of the pictures on your website. Pretty stunning. Oh, I just love it. I absolutely, absolutely love it. And um, oh, it's beautiful. And so I just decided I'm staying here. And so I'd left my bag in uh, Chicago. So I had to go back and get it, and break it to my friend that I wasn't staying. Um, and yeah, I took off back. And, and you know what? This is what I teach people. When you follow your heart and you follow your dream and you stay in your end result, things weird, crazy things happen to help you. And that was my dream. I wanted a healing center. I wanted, that's what I wanted to do. And I, I was in a, a restaurant and a load of guys came in, including the owner and said, we want to play music in the corner. Do you mind? And I'm like, no, I love that. So they went, oh, come on over. So they're all playing. This, there was this professional Mexican guitarist. Oh my God, his fingers were like, oh, He's a oh, professional really. Mexican? <sighs> Is that a job? <laughs> guitarist. <laughs> oh, guitarist. I was say, that's an interesting <laughs> you, job. You know what they, 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 like, they fingers I, are really uh, Yeah, like, I've been in oh, restaurants when they walk up while I'm trying to eat <laughs> chips. Well, this guy was, oh, oh, honestly, it was, it was amazing. We were all singing and, and, and we weren't drunk. And, you know, you only sing in England when you're drunk. Um, and yeah, it was wild. And the guy that owned the restaurant, by, by about four or five days in, um, said to me he'd got this beautiful piece of land and he wanted to create a, a healing center or a wellness center or something like that. And I could not move my ears. I was, so that's how it kind of started. I didn't end up doing it with him. All kinds of other things came up and like the story goes on and on and on. But eventually I did create my own place. And, uh, and I got to the point where I was breaking even. I'd opened the restaurant and I wanted to start my, my wellness services, but I was kind of out of practice. Uh, I'd always practice my my healing modalities and my my therapy and continue doing bits of coaching here and there, but I didn't have group facilitation skills that were since I'd left work work, like before I had my children, and I didn't have my confidence and it wasn't going anywhere. And I was thinking, how am I gonna? I was saying out loud, how am I going to get community here? You know, like, how am I going to get groups? How am I going to do this? And, and I really want to do this. Uh, like I said, another heart's desire. And, um, and I ended up coming back to the UK because my mother was having a, an operation that I didn't think she'd survive. She has, thankfully, but I didn't think she would. So I came back. And I had tickets to go back and I got locked down two weeks before I was just ah. And so the whole operation out there shut down. I got it shut down fast because we were locking down and I knew that they would be locking down. And I, I locked down there a day before their serious curfews and they got locked down hard, you know, they got really much harder than we did. And so I've spent the last two years here. So, and building my community, you know, I have now I've, I've been running groups online. I've been reconnecting with everybody, all the, the generative coaching community that I was in. I've been learning these fantastic alchemy skills and, um, yeah, I've, I've been running groups and I've, I've achieved everything that I was lacking. So now I am raring to get back to Peru. And I'm raring to get started with running retreats and 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 doing that kind. Of, yeah, 
Yeah, I get it. This this world of the pandemic, we were talking about this before we started and Zooming and what's possible online with the breadth of community that you can reach and the ease of you know connecting. It's pretty awesome. But then you still want to manifest it out into the world. Like I see it with stand up there. I have all this stuff that I'd like to go up and do with a live audience, but it's just not available, you know, and you can feel that that sort of chasm of lack of connection, you know, live experience, because there's no way to, to replicate that. This is great. And this has, this really does, I think, complement and open gateways to that other stuff, but man, come on, let's get back to live living. Yeah. And you know what? It's, it's a fascinating thing because I, I'd met and become close friends with so many people online. And I actually recently have been meeting some of them in the flesh. And it's been the most bizarre experience because, you know, we're all the same size online, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, you know, we're all, we're all this, this face in a box. And, and then you meet in person and, and it, it's, it's, it's really funny because it's this person that you've got this connection with and you feel, you know, strong friendship with. And but then they're in the, in the flesh that the, there's this whole different experience. It's yeah. It's yeah, it is. It is bizarre. I know, like on the lunch club stuff, the ones on the weekends where you're doing 10, 15 minutes, which I think is where we met. Yeah, that's that, yeah. You know, that modality of knowing that you've got a short time that it's essentialized, that people are kind of on their game and talking about their stuff um, is so different than the ones I find that are 45 set as 45 minutes. Mm. It's just the different, you know, ex what people bring to the moment is yeah. different. And then in person, you know, how much of the energy is dissipated around you and the, the rhythms are different and like, I'm really fascinated. So we'll talk about this, but I'm a, I'm an externalist. I'm a communicationist. Like, I don't really care. I'm not really, it's not my world to think about your internal world. My world is to think about your external world, like your behaviors. And so with communication, it's just been, I've done almost 500 of these talks now. And I take notes on all of them because it's fascinating. I bet. I to bet. suddenly be talking to somebody who's in Peru and watch how they talk and the cultural differences and just fascinating. I love mm -hmm. it. Me too. Me too. Communication is my thing too. It's uh, and, and, and the way that it's not even always verbal, you know, because I, I learned Spanish through immersion, just through being there. Uh, I didn't have any lessons. I, I did a little bit later on when I was realizing that I was only ever speaking in present tense and never in past tense. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that'd be weird. Uh, um, but um, you know, so I did start to take a few lessons a bit later on. But um, I was just learning expressions and just copying most of the time. And but the thing was, when I did start to learn in an academic way like learning lists of words and learning structure and having somebody explain the grammar to me i i it started to conflict with what i could what i realized i was understanding by feeling what somebody was saying and being present with them and and working it out based on what was going on around me and and the feelings that i was having and when, as soon as I started to kick in with the, the, the left side of the brain as, 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 as sorry, that side, <laughs> that left. <Yeah. laughs> I never know which side is which. <laughs> um, well, less like the logical side. And, and, and it just made me come out of my intuitive reading of what was going on um, and made me question what I was intuitively feeling and, 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 and I just realized that how intuitive we are and how intuitive we, intuitively we communicate, but language can get in the way of that. Like, cause that's just why we're always arguing about words and meanings, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. When I teach communication theory, which is the launch class that I suggest everybody takes when they really want to dive into communication, I'm going to, I'm taking my son through it because he's not going to college right away. So I'm like, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to home college you. And the communication theory course, I always launch with two different things, which is one is 
communication is mystical. It yes. doesn't actually work and it's mystical. Like it's an illusion that these words have tied down meanings and that we all share those meanings. At okay. best, it's slippery all over the place and we just act like it's not. Yes. And then there's a mysticism to exchanging symbols back and forth that goes way beyond this idea of I'm giving you information via words. It's just an odd collection of feeling and, and what isn't present, but is still functional. And it, it's, you know, when you communication came up during a time of social science after World War Two is when it came into the universities. So it got locked down by science. And they wanted to, you know, be like, oh, here's the model for it. And one of the early models was from Bell Laboratories, um, where it was basically, here's the user, and here's the channel, and here's noise, and the message, and the receiver. It's such a horrible way of thinking about communication. But it is that sense of until you understand that, yeah, you need to know the logistics of communication and semantics and all that. And then you kind of need to forget them and yeah. learn to communicate with that stuff infusing you, but not dominating you. Yeah, it is. It's fascinating. And, and because I'd learned two languages from scratch within kind of like a 10 year period, um, I, I really got a sense for that. I really got a sense that I wasn't always understanding the word or even remembering the words, but I could feel what was going on and I could feel meaning um and and that's fascinating and then the other thing that i've re recently been learning is and 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 i totally get this it's that we we birth our inspiration through our voice as well so when we by talking through something we can land our inspiration on things we can um our intuition um or our ideas or things birthing through us channel through our th through through us speaking and and i've really but since i've since i've been aware of this or, or or getting more curious about it i have noticed that when i'm explaining something i often go into metaphor when i'm explaining something and and even when I don't really know what I'm talking about or think I don't know what I'm talking about, if I just keep talking, things land for me. I start saying things and, and, and gaining an understanding of things by expressing, just by expressing, even when, I, even when initially I didn't really realise I understood something or didn't know that that theory was inside of me or that the idea was inside of me. And, and that's a fascination to me at the moment. I'm really, I'm really excited and interested at, at, by that. Yeah, because I think I it's, been, you know, I've been learning, reading, reading, reading people and reading, using my intuition. And that's what you're taught. You're taught to sp just speak, just, just let it come. What, what is there when you're in, in a state of innocence and curiosity. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, so one of the divisions in rhetoric is the uh, the binary between expressive and rhetorical. So rhetorical people want to think about the message, work on it before they release it. And expressive people tend to just say it and they don't even know what they're going to say until they hear it, until it's coming out of their mouths. And then sometimes you'll look back and go, where did that come from? How did I, because your brain, your brain just creates communication on its own. You are not in, I'm not in charge right now of what I'm saying. I'm just exactly. saying it. <laughs> exactly that. Exactly that. That fascinates me. Yeah. It's an odd process. So rhetoricians don't like that process because they don't trust your brain to create highly targeted, highly effective messages. But it's just a different orientation. Everybody edits their messages somewhat as they go, and you're doing it just at speed. But a rhetorician wants to slow it all down and be like, I want this to work really well. So what mm -hmm. conditions can I set up? What, what structures, what you know, ideas can we use and rules and things to make it where it just is so good 
and that's what people don't understand a lot of times about studying persuasion. They think it's manipulation or trying to get somebody to do something. It's really about maximizing the communication experience so that you get eventually out of it what you want, which is often a satisfying experience. You don't just want to move somebody. You want to have a satisfying experience. Connect. Yeah, you want to connect, don't you? That I think that's the ultimate thing. Is, is you're looking for you're looking for a connection. Kind of um, sometimes, like although, like when I do the lunch clubs, it's also I I've been trying to I don't really quantify things, but I'd say twenty percent of the time, maybe a little less, I just slam into a dysfunctional communicator, and they're either trying to sell me something, or they're talking in a rote way instead of being present, and it's fine because I like to study dysfunction too but I don't want to connect to those people. I immediately stop my authentic connecting and I watch what they're doing and see how long I can tolerate it. And then I, then I break them. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody will be pitching. I'll be like, well, so what I'm you're guilty of similar things. <laughs> like what you're trying. So what you're pitching to me right now is, and that word pitch just triggers them. I'm not pitching. I'm like, sure you are. You're absolutely pitching. Like you've said that exact thing you just said to me probably a few hundred times at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they just break and they're like, ah, I'm like, it's okay. I'm not attacking you. I'm just saying, why don't we move that aside and just kind of talk a little bit here and see how that works out. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of like lack of trust in the self to, 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 to be able to connect, it's kind of like I've got to use, I've got to say all these right things to connect. I've got to say all these right things to sell. I've got to say all these, you know, it's it's kind of this, this. well, that, that that's for me the distinction between coming from the ego and coming from the heart is, you know, if you if you think you there's so many things you've got to do and it's all about you, then you're just not going to, you're not going to gather, gather that heart connection. Whereas when it's authentic and it's in your 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 balanced and you're genuine, then naturally you find ways of connecting. I mean, how many things have come up in this conversation between you and I right now that we've got in common? It's like that's not that that's not by accident. That's that's when you're being authentic. That occurs. Well, I think. Again, I will yank you always back to rhetoric terms and you yank me right back into your terms. That's the way we talk. So well, you said you have to say all the right things and that's definitely a rhetorician thing, word craft, getting the messages right. But with you, you're kind of like an intuitive rhetorician. So you have to be in the right emotional space and the right mind frame to, to authentically connect with somebody. You have to be thinking of yourself as an authentic and being empathetic and being open. And those are all to me, like that's doing pathos work and rhetoric, but it's, it's creating again, the conditions to get what you want out of the communication. All right. I'm doing that totally. I, I'm doing all this manipulation. No, it's just construction. I'm it's not manipulation. <laughs> like I don't believe in that word manipulation. I think it's a bad word. So it's oh, just uh, you're uber constructing the moment. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, in a good it, way interesting though because i i'm not i didn't have consciousness around that that's that's what i'm thinking is that um it's it's not as something because i've not studied this it's not something i ever thought about but but it is kind of it is just very natural and preferred for me i i i absolutely I, I, you know I, this is this is something because i would really like to start speaking on on my subjects of, of being self-referenced of sovereignty that's kind of things very i'm very passionate about that but the idea of having to write myself a script or um or craft it in some way i'm like i can't even i don't <laughs> i don't want to I, and i don't well you I'm can be like that myself i don't have to you can, be like, to you can be like Jesus. Jesus never wrote oh. anything down. Just have a pe people hang around with you taking notes. Do you know what? I can't fancy myself as a, as a, as a female Jesus. Jesusa. Jesusa. 
I don't think you should be named off his name. You got to come with your own name. Like surely his sister wouldn't have been named Jesusa. <laughs> what would Jesus's sister have been named? Uh, well, I, well, I'm kind of close. I'm Marie, so I'm kind of close to his mom, aren't I? I gets a little weird, but yeah, years, <laughs> years, mom. It's a weird story. And then yeah, God but... sent a wingman down to impregnate some woman named Mary. What? Some child called Mary. How did, yeah. how did that? How did we slip that one by everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Female Jesus. I like it. You think of yourself as female Jesus. Tell me about that. Oh, I don't think I do. I think, oh, um, it's not a bad thing to aspire to, right? It's not a bad thing to think of, oh, you know, I'd like to be Jesus-like and, you know. Yeah, I would in the way that um, I, I am just very, I'm just deeply passionate about people connecting to their own heart and knowing their own truth and following it. Because the biggest lesson I've had in, in the pandemic is that there is evidence to support any theory or any point of view that you want. You can find a study on anything and everything. And, and yeah, there's bad evidence. There's a lot of bad evidence for everything. Yeah, <laughs> Again. You know what? This, I, well, I've really looked at certain things. You know, I've I've really like spent wasted quite a lot of time researching things because I've just felt inside of me that I that I just don't believe that. I don't believe that. And so going out in search of, and I found good evidence on either side of the fence and couldn't make my mind up based on the evidence that I was finding. And I thought, well, you know what? You've just got to choose what feels and resonates in you. And it does resonate you know, the truth in you, you feel, you can feel your truth. Yeah. You know, but I know a lot of people who feel their truth and I'm like, you don't, that's a bad truth. Like your truth is off key. Like, what do you do about that? Because like, this is, and, and again, like I'm, I have lots of fans or friends who are, uh, you know, in the healing arts and alternative world. And, and I, I love it. I love all of it. Listening to it. You know, I don't believe any of it because I'm a rhetorician. So I can't believe I can't be a believer and a rhetorician like that doesn't, they don't, they can't live in the same body, but, um, but I love listening to it. And, but when I, again, the rhetorician in me is always going to find not to try to deconstruct it or, or to contradict it, but it's going to find the other things that you're not seeing or saying. And so when I hear people say like, you got to find your own truth. I know people that have found their truth right now and are, basically buying a bunch of guns and joining militias here in Texas because they believe the government's coming after them. And that is their truth. And I'm like, no, 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 bad truth. No, that's not truth. That's fear. That's the difference. You see, the thing is a truth that a, a real, a real heartfelt truth is based in love. It's not based in fear. But that so, statement sounds, that sounds awesome. You're, you're totally yeah. for the positive feelings of life. I can tell, you know, I absolutely am. But the thing is, is, is there is a big difference between a truth that resonates and a truth that, that you think is a truth, a, 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 a thinking truth, which is coming out of defense and coming from your ego is very different from a truth that's resonating in you. That, that is the difference is, is, and and there are certain um, there are certain states to 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 help make you aware of this. So you know, can there's a lot there's a lot of talk about things like this at the moment, and a lot a lot of put it, people putting their ideas out about this. Um, but it really is what it boils down to is a sense of innocence and curiosity and neutrality. And when you're re when you are really centered and you are without all your baggage and, and, and you've taken off all your stresses and everything else, and you're in a sense of pure curiosity and and innocence, then from that place, 
you can when you connect to your heart when you connect to what you want from a from a more a calmed neutral sense of mind state then and and even when you speak to other people from that place they feel in them your that they feel in them the truth you you you, you it's a shared thing it's a, it's, a, it's what we talk about resonating but when when somebody is talking from total fear and and they're they're passionately putting out things that are that are frightening them to death and they're wanting to wake you up there's lots of that isn't there wanting to wake you up to my truth because and actually it's it's fear spreading and exactly and and they and that results in exactly what they don't want it results in the opposite you know you see a lot see you see a lot of this with um you know i've got well i did have quite a lot of um conspiracy theorist friends and and the thing was what was really challenging me about that was that there were certain facts in what they were saying that i knew to be true but it was the bit in the middle the the, the missing bit of information between two facts you know two facts that didn't make sense and the missing bit of information in the middle that was that was the theory of how these two facts connect would make it sound absurd and then the whole thing gets dismissed you know when in actual fact there is something there is something in there that there is a there is some truths in there but it's the way that's been packaged makes it into a load of nonsense so this really fascinated me and really interested me and and i and it was funny that after that that's when when this new um the latest thing that i started to learn which is um it's actually with a guy called william white cloud is based in california but he's he's a south i think he's he's african i think i don't remember what part of africa why on to him for just a second because i want to like talk about what you're just saying the um yeah. the idea of conspiracy theories and and like there's enough logic in there to keep people from completely breaking like there's enough neural network that you're like okay I, there's a little bit of truth in there there's a couple of facts in there um my again my world answers these challenges or these uh dysfunctional worldviews these dysfunctional choices by saying okay well where does your logic suddenly shift into bad logic so you have some good logic in there but what's happened from a rhetorical global perspective is there's a second form of logic that has been overlaid on the primary form of logic. And it comes from propaganda and, you know, uh, that whole world, the whole fictionized world, and, and it's been put on top of it. And people have crushed it together like this sandwich, and they can't tell the difference to, on the sides anymore. And so to them, the world makes logical sense within those two systems being crushed together. And my job a lot of times is to go and go, you know what, I'm going to take your sandwich apart. I'm going to get rid of this bad piece of rye bread or whatever it is, pumpernickel that you've been given. And we're going to go straight up, you know, ancient grains or something because you, you are getting confused cognitively by a language system. And when that happens, you know, you have to go in and clean that up. Now you have to get them to accept they need to clean it up, which kind of gets more into your world of them understanding that this is making them unhappy. They're frustrated and angry and fearful all the time. Yeah. Like, aren't, don't you want to get away from those feelings? Those are horrible. It is. So. It is. And it's, and it's self-defeating because uh, do you want me to turn my light on? I'm sitting here in the dark now. No, you're good. You, you have down. good lighting. No, it's good. Oh, oh, don't right, mess right. with it. Um, so it, it, it it's exactly that the 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 fact that it, it the fact that putting fear out brings what you don't want because it, it it's it's being in when you're working from fear you're trying to get validation and the more you try to get validation the more you you just it 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 just doesn't satisfy 
validation never satisfies you to get external validation i love i love external validation what's wrong with what's wrong with it you ever had 300 people laugh and applaud for you at a comedy club on saturday night it's like this it's like this ocean wave of validation it's so obsessed it it so obsesses people they end up so addicted to it that it's it's crazy addictive exactly it's incredibly (laughs) addictive it's incredibly addictive and but don't you want me to validate you right now wouldn't that be good right we should validate no. each other constantly no we should give out validations endlessly they're free they're it's they're beautiful good. i agree and i do and i and i and i do a lot i do um however it it's oh do you know i read the four i, I read the four agreements recently and i read it three times in a very short space of time because what I loved, I don't think you're familiar with the four agreements. The I know first it. one, be impeccable with your word. The second one is, uh, don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and do your best. Yeah. <laughs> and I have, about, I, I, again, comedy and rhetoric play with everything. So mine is the four invalidations. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's how I'm going to destroy our relationship. Are you ready? Here we go. Go on. No, that's okay. The thing is that the, the, the bit that I really, really, really loved was the, um, the bit about don't take anything personally, but don't take anything personally, good or bad, because the, when you're taking something personally, that, 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 that's bad and you walk away from that, then yes, it's, it's. When you when you when you get to that level of maturity of not taking things personally that are um, about the other person or or that it's that's nothing to do with you it's their it's their it's their stuff that's going on it's not yours it's getting projected on you etc. Like getting to that place is empowering, but I tell you what's even more empowering is not needing to take the to, to take the good personally either. That's real empowerment. It's kind of the Eastern sort of mysticism core concepts of getting rid of the ego and the self and just existing, not allowing these things that are coming at you from the world to tear you apart, no matter whether they're good or bad. Like the whole, I mean, the whole basis of a lot of Buddhism and and sort of Eastern mysticism is the destruction of the individual in a good way or the dissolution of the individual need and want yeah but but not to i think it can get misinterpreted when um when we assume that that means not to feel and not to not you know not not to yeah to not feel um but it isn't about not feeling it because you do feel when you can let go of all of that and you you don't need positive or you know you can let go of the negative but you can also let go of the positive and not need it. That's real sovereignty. That's, that's, that's when you don't need any codependence. That's when you, that's when you're really in your power. And that's what I'm passionate about. That's what I want everyone to understand. And that, and do you know that famous speech by, um, um, Steve Jobs? where he talks about um, finding your true vocation and never let never letting your voice be drowned out by the rhetoric of other people and, and never like find hey, what careful, you love. Hey, careful, don't slander my word, my rhetoric, <laughs> my rhetoric word. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he does. He, he, he talks about the fact that he, in this fabulous speech that he did, I think it was a Princeton or Yale University or something like that and he was talking about like find what your passion is find what your dream is find what you really want to do especially if it's technological and will make you a billionaire he lead that little footnote he He followed his I don't know if that's what he did or not or if he's backfilling this with you know that's what I did and look how successful it was I don't know no I I know if you listen to that speech it's it's very impressive. It really impresses me. And, and he talks about following your heart, finding your, 
finding your passion and if you don't find it straight away keep looking and don't let the noise how does he say it? don't let the noise of other people's I can't remember how it, I wish I could I wish I could quote it because it's fabulous the way he words it but it's like don't let the words of other people drown out your inner voice what you know to be true for you don't let others drown it out and I, I think we live in a world of drowned it out that, that drowns out what we think it's like it just turns us into sheep the, the, the stuff that comes up as the fear that's constantly coming at us turns us into sheep. We Maybe. just like forget I, I, our I, own I, voice. I think sometimes I have a hard time uh, getting into that space because I've always had such a loud voice inside my head. Like get, or very early at five years old when I lived in Kentucky, we were, you were talking about escaping Yorkshire and I escaped Kentucky. Uh, I it was going, hey, get out of here. Like this is not acceptable level of human, you know, existence. Go, go. And so like, I don't care what anybody else says. Like I've never had noise that's louder than what's in my head to drown, to drown out that inner beacon that's telling me, no, go there because that's better. Quit hanging out with this because this is not, this is not what you want. And I think, you know, that's not the same for everybody. Clearly everybody does end up with noise in their head and they need beacons to help them out of it. I think things like, you know, jobs or whenever somebody makes a really good uh, message that, that gives people a beacon type of beacon out of things. And I think that's what you do. It sounds like for, I think most alternative people and healers are trying to create strong beacons for people to follow, to get out of that noise, you know, because you, you, you believe that is going to be healthier and that they're going to be happier and more fulfilled and more real and, and all that good reward. So I always, that's why I say, I always admire people who are doing it. And I see, I've talked to past life shaman regressors. I've, they're all trying to do the same thing. It's like, Hey, I've got a modality that can get you to the beacon. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. I love that yeah. offer. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I'm open to, I'm open to any that work. I don't, I don't peddle a particular one it's you know i acknowledge that that there are there, there are many different routes um to these things however i i i just get upset when um when people get kind of stuck in the in the woo woo it's it's a little bit like the, the way the bible can be very badly interpreted in a very literal way and then exactly the same can happen to any of these healing modalities where people are just not actually connecting with the intention of it they're connecting with they're breaking it down and trying to make it logical and trying to make it fit into something and trying to make sense of something and trying to validate something because as soon as you're going after validation you're screwed I don't know. I like it. I, I completely under, I completely agree with that statement that chasing validation is a bad policy. Mm. I also completely think that if you understand that you can still feed on validation just as like snacks. It's just so much fun to do things like when you entertain people and you make people laugh, it is a validation, you know, or yeah. when you make a really good intellectual point, you really, you know, bring something together as and make it a nice little communication ingot that everybody can understand. That's awesome. That feeling of doing that for other people is awesome. It is. I totally agree with that. And and we are hardwired to connect. I really do believe that. And it's it getting is darker much. there because you are you're kind of descending into the dark. No, I'm like, and my 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 face is getting whiter getting and whiter and whiter. And it's like, oh, she's turning into her vampire self as we talk. <laughs> <laughs> well it's just that i've sat by the window and the sun's gone down because it's now like here it's uh five to seven and it's 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 moving towards that time of year and i'm going to escape the winter i'm so excited that the weekend that the clocks change is probably two days later i'm going to be out of here so i am nice. not yeah, talk really... about that you're getting to go back to peru that's that's a I nice am. energy in it talk about that how'd that come up about they're they're back open or well they're opening enough 
they're open enough to let me back in. So I, I officially won't be allowed to come back here um, because they're a red country. But their, their stats are going, the, the virus has gone down tons, you know, it, as, it, as it's calming down everywhere, I think. Um, what, what, so, in countries like that, like, again, across different cultures, it's so different how you get people to accept the vaccine and, and things like that. Like, I guess because Peru, almost any time that I've watched any sort of media on it, it's some documentary or something about indigenous Peru. And there's a lot of poverty. Like what, what is the, maybe you can answer this, maybe you can't, but like, what's the reaction to something like this modern tech protecting vaccine there? Like, are they pro, are they doing it or not? Well, yeah, pretty much. The, the thing is with, um, the thing is, I, I live in South Peru, in Cusco, near Cusco. Um, and I, and I live in a mountain village i live in an inca town it's like how you stop there i live in a mountain like i live yeah. inside a peruvian I, no, mountain I inside a mountain old but dwarf I, i'm mine. surrounded by mountains i'm surrounded, surrounded by, by silver and and dragons okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there i am in my cave with my cauldron and stirring it up um no unfortunately not but i am surrounded by them and there's a there's an incredible fortress in oliantai tambo where i live and it's the stop, it's the train stop for Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is the next, it's where you get the train to Machu Picchu. And it's, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a living Inca town. People are living in the Inca buildings and um, it's got all those, you know, the stones that are just locked together with no cement. And um, yeah, it's beautiful, incredibly beautiful. And I've forgotten the point of why I was. Oh, telling sorry. You. Well, I yeah, I, I sometimes I can't stop. Just I find something interesting or funny, and I drag it over there. But I'll drag it back. So oh, you're yeah, talking the, about getting the, to go vaccines, back. The the the, the, the it was, You're talking about the vaccines. Yeah. Um. The thing is, generally speaking, they're not educated. They don't have access to good education, and many of the the communities that are that are close by the Oliente Tambo is the town and there's people living up in the mountains in communities and they have very limited schooling they they often don't speak Spanish they speak Quechua so they don't even have um facility in the greater you know in the bigger cities and and things like that because they don't necessarily all speak Spanish even so it's very very limited education so if they're told that sticking this in their arm is going to stop them dying they'll stick it in their arm you know it, it's as simple as that the, the, well they're not the, having a bunch of disinformation coming at them too right no yeah no they're not it's a better system well it depends which side of the fence you want us to with you call that disinformation isn't it so um i'm on the correct side of the fence Okay. I stand I on the correct. That I, that's my policy is I always try to make sure I stand on the correct side of the fence. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, is that is, that's an interesting thing for me, because you see, I just believe that you should be able to do what's true for you and what you believe in. And I think everybody should have that choice. Horrible policy. Well, I just, that's what I believe. Because... I believe, I believe that too, like as a general rule for human beings, but the specifics of how it plays out in the modern world, very bad policy. Like my, I've, got, I've got friends who, I know a guy who's, you know, high school education and he's given me his research for why he's not taking the vaccine. I'm like, so what you're telling me is the most scientifically advanced medical um, product ever created untested. on the face of the earth untested except on the, on the face of the it's been tested in four billion people now and now it has yeah now it has what you're and telling me is you mr high school are going to make your own decision about it now as a rhetorician again and again this is not a personal judgment i don't judge anybody i judge their rhetoric i judge their process Mm -hmm. Like that 
is the like if I if I came to you and said, okay, I'm gonna let this engineer who's built 50 bridges build this bridge, but I'm also gonna let this guy over here dig it out of high school, throw his ideas in there, and we're gonna use them both. What do you think? You wanna drive over that bridge? Oh, I'm not finding that a very good analogy. Um, it's just science. Like, do you trust somebody who does science or do you trust somebody who has intuition? Do you know what? Yes. Yes. There's a good point because I trust the person that does intuition more. But intuition can be horrible. People can be horribly, horrible intu intuition. There's no such they thing be as horrible intuition. They can be completely off in their intuition. Not unless they're not in their intuition. You've never misjudged someone? I, I don't think I would ever mis misjudge somebody from my intuition if I were purely in my intuition. So it's, now, the, it's just better knowing, intuition. Knowing that you're in your intuition and knowing how to access your intuition, now that's questionable. Um, how can you have intuition really about a medical product? <laughs> well, I think you can. I think you can know you can. your own truth as to whether you think you need it or not. So if you walked up and the syringe, there was just a syringe sitting on a table yeah. and you'd never heard about this and you're like, okay, well, my intuition says to let them put this in my arm. You wouldn't do that. You get information. You'd be like, well, what is it? What's it do? Then, uh, and then it's not intuition. It's a cognitive choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the thing is, is what happens when that information is not not available because it hasn't it hadn't yet been tested widely and the way that the data is collected for adverse reaction is not collated accurately or well and that um but you're okay so let's i'm gonna we're gonna get off this i want to talk about peru again but just yeah. remember like you're an intu 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 intuition expert right a wellness expert uh, yeah yeah this yeah. is what you do right I do, yeah i do know quite a lot about it yeah. yeah you're not a scientist that's not what you do do you know what i used i i have a very strong science background yeah. i i have studied tons of stuff scientifically like as, um, as an undergraduate it's like, not your job yeah, yeah. you're not a I, super I, expert I, in science oh god no i'm not a scientist no yeah. no no, but I can read studies and I can, I can, you know, I, I've learned to critically assess studies oh and things like that. You know, it's like, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't just read something in a, in a magazine and believe it, you know, no, I know not. how to look up studies and I know how to crit critique a study and, you know, I. Right. But this, again, this is what I do. So this side of the world is like rhetoric bells going off, like somebody claiming some primacy to make a decision on something like this because of their uh, belief in themselves. That's just a rhetoric. Like that's just something you've been taught or you've, you've absorbed and you believe as the best system for you. So if I want to get in there and interrupt that, because I think it's dangerous or I don't like it or whatever, then I would just go in and I would start moving your belief system around. Yeah, see, that's <laughs> interesting because, because I would argue that your belief system is your ego validating you. And I would, I would argue that your intuition transcends that. That, that, that tuition thing is a slippery slope um, because defining it and knowing it and like you spend a lot of time in your life getting in touch with it. Like it sounds like you are a super expert in intuition. You think in these terms a lot and you, and you work in these and you see it in other people and probably far more than 99.999% of the population. So you, you have a different feeling and different attachment to intuition than others. Yeah, I, I think intuition can be badly interpreted. I think that's absolutely right. And I think when somebody thinks that 
that that it's when when somebody has a reaction and they can't explain their reaction and they think that that is their intuition it's not and that's the problem with 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 not understanding really what intuition is because yes. intuition is not a gut reaction in fear. That is not intuition. It's like a smackdown intuition versus cognition. Here we go. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. And the thing is, is you need both. You need, you need both. Um, and <laughs> do you need to get back in your coffin yet? You look like you're, <laughs> <laughs> I told you I could turn the light on. Do you want me to turn the light? Try it. Let's see. I don't want you to disappear <laughs> into the darkness where you're just some, I'm just you know, turn the light on. some irises kind of in the dark. <laughs> there we go. Ta -da! Now you are bathed in the light of cognition. I'm back in the light. It's coming. You know, <laughs> you know what? You know what? There, there, there's um intuition is bathing over you and lighting you. It's an you intuitive know, light bulb. Been with me this morning, right? This morning I was um I, I was doing a, a a session with somebody and we were doing some visioning of 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 uh something they want to create. Yeah. And and I was sat on the other on the other the chair and the light was coming through the window and I'd got this rainbow like central violet light coming right through me and the and the outside and like the 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 visioning and the and the yeah. coming through me. You would not believe I couldn't <laughs> even believe what I was coming up with. And 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 the person that I was working with, they're going, you know, you got purple light coming through your head. <laughs> That's great. You can make it up. It was a... Yeah, then it becomes like a seance, was... like you're being was... supernaturally bathed in I'm like, forces. I'm this on purpose. It's like it's the sun just coming. You gotta, to... you gotta set that up as your thing. Like you can be the, yeah, you can be the uh, purple light mystic. It's like I'm channeling. It's like I'm so not. I'm so not like. I I just don't like that kind of. Um, wacky descriptions and stuff but it was really funny this morning when 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 that was happening because because the because we do literally i like it i'm gonna start doing that i'm gonna have like a <laughs> colored light switcher over here and it's just gonna be like turn me green and things when i'm talking about different things so when i start talking about logic i'm gonna be like cold blue the yeah. cold blueness yeah. of logic yeah oh it's funny but so you're gonna go back you're going to go back to Peru. Tell me what that's going to look like. What are you going to do? Are you no, going to start I, things up I, again or? I honestly don't know right now. I honestly don't know what, what, what I'm going to do. Um, I have a, um, I have a house that's kind of derelict that, that I bought, oh, I don't know, about five years ago. And, um, and at the time I was focused on my on my business and creating that and setting that up. Whereas now that I've decided I would like to be based back in the UK, I've kind of got used to a first world way of life. I've started to benefit from technology again. And and I kind of thought, you know what, I do need to educate because I've got a younger son now, I've got a seven year old and uh, you know, I do need to educate him back here. I can't educate him. I can, it's primary education. I'm absolutely fine for that to be fluid. And, and it's more important to me that he speaks Spanish well and English. So that is more of a priority for me at the moment. But when it gets to secondary, he's got to be in a first world country. I, uh, I don't want to educate him over there. So I've got three years and um i want to get my house i want to get i want to get my base because i want to be able to have time over there i want to be able to spend at least three months running my retreats through you know june july august maybe some of september so i want a base out there so i think when i first go i'm going to be looking at that sorting out my house uh, well, it's, at the moment, it's just a bunch of Inca walls. So making that habitable. Um, 
and and seeing how things pick up because obviously there's, there isn't tourism there yet so i'm working on at the moment i'm collaborating with a number of people to 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 work on my workshops and my offerings and what i'm going to do when i can open but to be honest it's not essential that i've got a center because there's plenty of hotels outside space um I can be easily accommodated. I don't need to be worried about having a business and living at the other side of the world and and all the hassle and the everything around that. I, do, I, I don't necessarily need it. There's enough facility out there um, that I can that I that I can buy into to, to to run what I want to run. So I think, ironically. Now that now that I'm skilled up and now that I can do all those things, I can't actually because of um, the situation and people not being able to travel, not being able to travel yet. So what I will do is probably focus on my base and and getting my my house sorted out and then looking at what I can do next because I. I'm thinking by Spring Bank next year that people are going to be climbing the walls to get out. Don't you think? Yeah, I, you would. I mean, I already am. And, you would and think so. I'm, the pent up energy of two years of, you know, non community yeah. or weaker forms of community for sure. Absolutely. So um, I'm, I think by, by then, and it will have given me time to have got my got myself based, you know, properly. So, um, yeah. Well, That's it's exciting. The, I mean, the world the world is the world, right? The world shuts and closes and falls apart and reassembles. And you're like, I guess I'm in the middle of this. <laughs> you know, it's like, I guess I'll adjust and do my thing in whatever configuration the world decides it's going to throw at me, but. Um, it is, it, when I see somebody like you, who's, who's found, you know, sort of strong themes in her life and has pursued them strongly and gotten things and felt things ebb away and go find another version of it. Like it's, it's really cool to, to see somebody that's working in an area that's completely not me. It's completely not what I do, but I completely appreciate how much effort it takes and, and that you're authentically bringing this to the world and to people. So it's, it's. It's cool. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. kind. I feel very validated. Thank you. Yes, you should feel validated. <laughs> now let it go and just forget I ever said it. <laughs> I'm still going to do it anyway. Um, and yeah, so, but yeah, I know I do appreciate that. But um, yeah, I, I, and I, you know, I do like that about myself. I do like the fact that, like you, I've never really been a person that, that gets my, inner voice shouted down uh i have and especially being female as well you know i don't know how many times i've had to fight tooth and nail to to, to push to do what i want to do but i just makes me stronger just makes me want to do it more <laughs> so you know but i do feel for people who who i, I mean I, I i just have that sort of personality but you know, I, I do see so many people that get very oppressed and don't have that inner strength or or free energy to, to, to create what they want. Yeah, and it's an unfair fight in a lot of ways. There's a lot of unfair fights out there and individuals being told that, you know, you should push on through. I'm like, that's that's awesome advice from a distance, but you need to strengthen people and give them the tools to push on through noise and avalanches and all the things that life is going to throw at you. You can't just say, go do it. You got to no. empower people. And uh, again, it sounds like that's what you're doing. So super cool. Yeah. Well, tell people and how to find your, your stuff. Like tell people if they want to talk to you and they've been like, oh, she's, she's so intuitive. And Dan is so cognitive. <laughs> I'd rather talk to the into it. How do they find you? I can be pretty logical as well. Um, through my, you can find me on LinkedIn quite easily, um, and through my website almaamor.com. Uh, 
it's spelt exactly as it sounds and um and yeah be happy for anybody to c connect with me if you want to talk about anything or interested in my services they're not up on my website yet because i'm still in creation mode but they will be soon and uh yeah anybody wants to come out to peru or anybody wants to collaborate anybody who's interested in what i'm talking about feels the same then you know i'm i love connecting i love i love lunch club that's why i'm a <laughs> proper that 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 day when i met you i was I was, it was, I'm like, God, 15 minutes, I can speak to anybody in the other, anybody anywhere in the world that's got some kind of interest that I've got, because you, you set up your interest, don't you, on there, your profile on there, and, and, and just connect with, with, I, I was, it was, yeah, I was wet in my pants with excitement, I've got it, I can't think of another expression, but I was absolutely wet in my pants with every single person was so interesting and yeah it was really good so yeah, i'm I... happy always happy to connect with people and talk with people about stuff i mean i'm not i'm a bit busy moving to peru <laughs> in the it. next few weeks but if you drop me if anybody drops me a note on linkedin or um or contacts me through my website then i'll be in touch sooner or later but it just might be a little bit later than sooner at the moment. Well, I'll circle back around once you're in Peru. And we'll we'll talk again. It's super yeah, fun. I'll you the view. It won't be. I won't be sat in the dark like this with uh, <laughs> my grand's wallpaper. I expect some type of glowing rainbow effect aura of Peru, like whatever it is. I expect you to be, have the, the hat with the. Don't they have the tassel, the ball tassels in Peru, or is that another culture? No, that's Argentina. They have all kinds of stuff. Yeah. They have all kinds of costumes, and uh, they all dress up and party like rock stars. Um, <laughs> during Pentecost yeah. and right through the summer, they dance nonstop. That's another thing. I just love to dance, and and you know English people can't dance to save their lives. So no. I, I just I sometimes I think I was I landed here by accident. I'm glad I speak English, right? But I don't know how I ended up being English. <laughs> yeah, who knows? These crazy karmic merry-go-rounds <laughs> drop off the merry-go-round at the wrong spot this this life. So that's right. Well, you don't have to stay anywhere you don't want to be. Well, cool. I enjoyed it very much. Thanks for jumping on and talking. Good Thanks luck too, moving too. to Peru again. We'll check back in with you. You have to come visit me. You're not very far away. I'm I'm not. I'm no. in Texas. It used yeah. to be Inca it's land, probably, or Mayan land here yeah. at some yeah. point. Well, uh, again, enjoyed it. Everybody, uh, this has been Marie, and uh, go check out her stuff. And we will come back around and talk to you again. Uh, everybody, thanks for coming to the Reddick Warriors podcast. Get out there and persuade some people. As always, they need it. Oops. Oh, I hit the end meeting, so I guess I'm just going to jump off. <laughs>